In this video, we're going to take a look at what happens to power and current inside a transformer. We know from previous videos very well what happens to the voltage inside a transformer, but let's take a look first at power. We know that in an electrical circuit, the power in that circuit can be calculated by multiplying the voltage by the current. Very well-known equation, P equal to V times I. Therefore, we can work out the power inside this transformer. Let's first look at the primary side of the transformer. So the power in the primary circuit is equal to the voltage across the primary coil multiplied by the current through the primary coil. And similarly, the power in the secondary part of the transformer is equal to the voltage across the secondary coil multiplied by the current through the secondary coil. But if we assume that this is a highly efficient transformer and that no power is lost as we move from the primary to the secondary coil, then we can say that the power in the primary coil is equal to the power in the secondary coil. Now, obviously, that assumes that there are no energy losses at all. Now, in reality, there's always some energy loss, mostly in the form of heat. The power that we put into the primary coil is not all transferred to the secondary coil, but for most purposes, and in most cases, we can assume that there are no power losses. Now, if that is the case, then we have this very important equation emerging that the voltage across the primary coil multiplied by the current through the primary coil is equal to the voltage across the secondary coil multiplied by the current through the secondary coil. Let's put this equation to use in an example. So in our example, we have a primary coil with 200 turns and a secondary coil with 40 turns. And let's also say that we pass a uh, we, we apply a voltage across the primary coil of 400 volts and we um, know that the current through that primary coil is equal to 7 amps. We want to find out what is the current flowing through the secondary coil. Well, we can't work out the current through the coil until we know the voltage across the coil and thankfully for us, we have our very nifty transformer equation. We know the number of turns in the secondary coil and the number of turns in the primary coil, and we know the voltage across the primary coil, so we can work out what the voltage across the secondary coil is. So let's do that. And we get that 40 divided by 100 is equal to the voltage across the secondary coil divided by 400 volts. We can simplify 40 divided by 100 to 2 divided by 5, rearrange our equation, multiply both sides by 400 volts, and we get that the voltage across the secondary coil is equal to 2 fifths multiplied by 400. Therefore, the voltage across the secondary coil is equal to 160 volts. Okay, so now we know that. Now we can use our power equation. We know that the voltage across the primary coil multiplied by the current through the primary coil will equal to the voltage across the secondary coil multiplied by the current through the secondary coil. Let's fill in the values that we know. 400 volts multiplied by 7 amps, remember that's the current through the primary coil, is equal to the voltage across the secondary coil multiplied by the current through the secondary coil, which is what we are trying to find. Now, we can therefore calculate that there are 2,800 watts in this primary coil circuit. And assuming that there's no power losses, no energy losses, we can equate this to the power in the secondary circuit. So we're going to rearrange this equation slightly, divide both sides by 160 volts, and we can then work out that the current through the secondary coil is equal to 17.5 amps. Now just take a look at what we have done. This was a step down transformer. There are more turns in the primary than in the secondary coil, therefore the voltage across the primary coil is greater than the voltage across the secondary coil. 
But if we are to assume that there are no power losses and that energy can't be created or destroyed, then we expect there to be more current flowing through the secondary coil than flowing through the primary coil. And that is exactly what we find. If the voltage is lower in the secondary coil than the primary coil, we expect the current to be higher through the primary coil than, sorry, through the secondary coil than through the primary coil.